Well, hello and welcome in. Today, we are going to be talking about how you can add a cool blur effect to your live stream. And there are so many ways in which you can make this look absolutely amazing. Now, I use this effect on my Be Right Back screen and also on my Starting Soon screen. So this is kind of cool because it still gives people a glimpse into what's going on, but it blurs everything out so they're not seeing the, the detail. It's kind of like a little cheeky teaser and that's why I like it. But there are so many other ways in which you can use this. I actually also use this effect in my overlays. So it kind of looks like there's blurry glass in parts of my overlay. If you pair this with a green screen, you could potentially fake a blurred background on your camera. If that's something you'd like to see a video on, let me know. I'll hang the green screen up and we'll have a go. But for today, I'm just going to show you the basics of how to add the blur. So let's stop faffing around and let's get to it. this effect you're gonna need two things one of them is OBS studio and the other is a plugin called stream effects and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment now this isn't gonna work on Streamlabs OBS as unfortunately they don't allow plugins so for now this is only gonna work on OBS studio if you are maybe thinking of just getting started with OBS and this is maybe your first look into it I did actually make a beginners tutorial to get you started so be sure to check that one I will leave links in the description for it and I'll leave all of the links for everything you'll need down in the description so check that out afterwards if you need to so let's go take a look at where you can get the plugin and how to install that so when you click the link down in the description you'll be brought to this page on github which will give you the download link now i'd suggest that before you install this is that you close your obs just make sure it isn't running you will need to restart anyway so just have it shut down and then once you've installed the stream effects plugin then you can boot it up and you shouldn't have any problems then if you just scroll down to the bottom you will see there is a number of assets so lots and lots to choose from and in my case i'm streaming on Windows so I will want to choose the Windows file down here and I'm gonna go for the .exe file if you have any issues installing this you might want to actually grab the zip file and you can unzip it directly into the folder location that I will specify in just a moment but for now we can just go ahead and choose the exe file you may well get warnings and that kind of thing this is perfectly safe anything that is listed on the OBS website is absolutely fine and has been tested and this is included but it shouldn't take very long to download Load. once it's done give it a click again it may prompt you to give administrator access those kind of things just go ahead and choose okay run anyway whatever you're prompted accept the agreement and choose next I'm not going to install it because I already have it installed and I don't want it twice but follow those instructions when it asks you for which location you want to save this you want to make sure it is saved in the following location come to program files either the standard program files or the times 86 one I'm going into program files here and you need to find where your OBS studio file is located and it is this one here so that there will be the location that you select to install any plugins and the exe file should automatically install them all in here for you now when it's been installed successfully you will know because when you actually restart your obs you will have this option up here at the top which says stream effects and that allows you to report bugs and crashes see the help and support desk all that kind of thing and also specify how and when you want to receive updates for it now stream effects actually gives you lots of new options but the one that we're looking at today is just the blur effect so we'll just focus on that for now so i'm just going to hop over into studio mode so that i can show you this working without stopping this from recording and let's pick our tutorial screen which is blank so we can play around with this one and add all kinds of things so for the sources let's add in our camera and let's try applying this effect to the camera and see what we can do in there i have done another tutorial which talks about nested scenes if you're not familiar with what they are and why you should use them do go check that one out it links in very very importantly to enable us to apply this effect say to one camera and have it not affect another camera in a different scene because Sometimes you want to be able to go to your BRB screen, like how I have it set up and have a blur on the camera. And then you want to be able to switch out to another camera, which doesn't have that effect on there. So nested scenes will help you with that. So in this case, for my camera, I'm actually going to choose a scene. And in here, I'm going to choose my main camera scene. So in that scene just sits my camera. So now whenever we apply an effect onto this main cam scene, it's only going to affect that scene specifically instead of making changes to the original camera so if I started applying blur effects on my actual camera it's going to affect my face that you can see talking to you right now and we don't want that so to start adding our effect 
right click on the source within here, which is our main camera scene. I know the sources and scene things, it gets a bit confusing, but bear with. And within here, we're going to choose filters. Within filters, you now want to click this plus down at the bottom, which will show all of your available filters. You may or may not have as many as me, but you will definitely now have more than you previously had due to installing this plugin. And the one we're looking at today is the blur filter. So we're going to choose this one here. We'll just call it blur. And you can see straight away that has applied a pretty standard blur over our image here. There are lots of different types to choose from, linear, Gaussian, dual filtering, and you also have different subtypes such as area, directional, so that will kind of look like it's been a whip pan blur, um, rotational, so you get like a spin effect in the blur, and also zoom is kind of like a punching in sort of blur on there. If you find that you have any issues running any of these and they're being a bit of a drain on your resources, the best one to use is dual filtering. It seems to be the least intensive, so we'll just step that one down a little bit and we'll use that one for this example. We'll We'll leave it on area. I quite like it about there. Now down below you can also apply a mask to this. So if we tick this box we get some more options down here at the bottom. Now we can choose to apply a mask by region and when we scroll down just a little bit in here we can see the edges which we can pull that in. So for example let's just pull in the left edge all the way here. So I'm going to kind of box myself in a little bit as close as I can. So let's pull it in maybe about there so we're getting a bit of the chair in and we'll leave the bottom edge all the way down but you can see here it's a very definite line isn't it so if we scroll down a little bit as well we can also add a nice feather to that and just soften up that edge so it looks a little bit more natural and not quite so jarring so that's the area of the feather but you can also then do the feather shift which is going to affect the intensity of that feather and how strong that effect is so have a play until you like that so if I turn this up a little bit you can see I now look like I'm a witness on crime watch so you could use it for effectively censoring areas of your screen or just blurring things out that you don't want people to see and you can be quite creative with how this would apply you can even use a mask of say a shape which would allow you to apply this blur specifically to the shape or outside of the shape but let's just say actually what we want to do is I want to blur out all of the stuff that is not currently focused on here so if we come down to the bottom and I choose invert region that has now kept me in focus and blurred out all of the background now I do understand that that looks pretty bad at the moment but let's just take the effect of that blur down a touch and when we bring it much lower that actually doesn't look like a bad big blurred background and there's emphasis on me and everything else is blurred out of course it's not true depth of field but it's not bad for a quick couple of clicks now if you want this to be a true depth of field effect using this tool you would actually need to pair it with a green screen so what i suggest you do is that you take yourself out of the shot grab your chair take it away anything that you want to be in focus kind of get out of the picture then with your camera take a still photo of all of your background what you'll then do is put that picture as a source into obs you can apply the blur effect to the background and then you can sit in front of a green screen and kind of key out all of yourself around there so you will look like you are sat against a blurred background but you will be completely in focus so that's another way in which you could get a more blurry effect because unfortunately not everybody can afford a DSLR camera which would allow you to have that natural depth of field so this is you know get creative with it see what you come up with you could also create a cool camera border with this very same effect just by changing the mask type. So let's actually set that to be an image. So let's come in here and search for a mask image. You can see that I have quite a lot of variations there. But if I choose this one here and choose open, you can see what that's done. Let me just turn up that so it's a bit more obvious but that's added a really cool border around my camera without really having to do anything and you could get really funky with this so let's try a different one this is quite a cool one let's apply this one here how cool is that whoa <laughs> it's really up to your imagination see what you can come up with I am going to do a video on how to use masks and other ways in which this can be quite useful if that's something you're interested in be sure to hit the subscribe and all of that kind of stuff um, and I'll be posting them in the future so I'm actually going to undo this one and I'm going to go and add a new blur effect on there. So remember, you can actually add multiple filters on here. You can kind of stack them up and have multiple different blur effects so that you could toggle backwards and forwards between different things. But this one, I want to do just a little bit differently. So again, I'm going to change it to the dual filtering. I'm going to actually crank this one up a fair bit and I'm going to apply a mask again. But this time I'm going to bring the right edge 
all the way in over here. So as well as potentially censoring or hiding information, we can also use this to actually highlight information. So if our chat box was here, it would enable us to see the chat words much easier than if it was just behind on a normal background. So I use this exact method on my overlays. The very top of my screen, I have a chat bar. So I actually have the blur right up at the top so that it has a nice background to sit on and it's not distracting with the background. And I also have it down at the bottom, a bigger area where I have all of my stream stats. And you will see that it just helps any kind of text stand out from a normal background while not looking too cluttered and actually looking quite streamlined. It kind of looks like frosted glass, which I really, really like. Again, you can get so creative with this in your custom overlays and making your stream really, really stand out from the crowd. So that is it. A really simple and easy way to add blur into your live stream, whether you apply that to your camera or your backgrounds or your game screens, whatever you're using it for. I'd really love to hear how you're going to apply this to your stream so do jump in the comments and let me know it would be great to see what you're doing out there because there's some really really creative stuff going on currently in the live streaming world so if you enjoyed this video or you found any of it useful please go ahead and do all of those things that i love 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 like comment subscribe you know what to do so whatever you're doing with the rest of your day have a good one and i'll see you in the next one